Hey everybody and welcome back. It's Inside the Force. Dave Cottingham here with Casey Cooley. Hello everybody. Hello and welcome to the, I guess almost kind of new again, uh, edition of Inside the Force. I've got a little bit of a different background uh, yeah. to <laughs> the, Much cooler than mine. Well... I you know I got a lot of Star Wars stuff over the years. Yeah, I got uh, some. I just haven't hung things up yet. Yes. Uh, this is the same room that we normally record in. It's yeah. uh, the it's table a different back point there. of view. Different point of view. Yeah, and I just did this last night where I turned my desk so mm-hmm. that yeah, it's cool. That. So anyway, um, yeah, I got a lot. Of, I got a lot of straightening still to do back there. There's actually some DC stuff sitting over there. <laughs> it's like Yoda's, My, uh, Yoda's above it. Yoda's oh yeah, yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Yoda's up above it, and I haven't gotten the. Uh, I got to get the Rise of Skywalker poster up there yet. I haven't gotten yep. that yet. Anyway, uh, welcome back. Hope everybody's staying safe and um, you know keeping their spirits up and listen to a bunch of podcasts. Uh, there's a lot of content coming out out there, you know, with people being home and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, it's it's good to get on there and, and kind of listen to everybody and and watch everybody. Uh, we are, you know, still kicking off uh, each week and, and talking Star Wars. We're going to dive into more Clone Wars talk this episode where episode six of the Clone Wars dropped this past Friday. Deal, no deal where we continue Ahsoka's storyline. So we'll talk a lot about that. Um, we'll talk a little bit about some comics here also. Um, issue number four of Star Wars uh, came out last week as well. And then uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Anakin and Ahsoka in general um, because there was a really good scene in this episode regarding them. And yes. uh, I, I thought that was really cool. And plus I went back and... Rewatched the last four episodes of season five mm-hmm. uh, a couple days ago, a few days ago, which was pretty awesome. So I wanted to kind of tie that back. But first up, uh, this episode, episode six, we find Ahsoka still down in 1313 and accompanying uh, Rafa and Trace as they take on another job, a very dangerous job, uh, which involves the dangerous Pike Syndicate. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what's your uh, overall impressions case with episode six here of this, <coughs> this last season? Uh, I lo- I'm loving this arc so far. Um, I think I kind of talked about it last episode, but <clears throat> I, I love these stories uh, when Clone Wars kind of does these more, when they break away from the wars a little bit and they do more um, kind of. I don't know if you call it intimate, intimate or kind of more on the ground level of just the people that make up um, the galaxy at large. And to see kind of all of this from the point of view of new characters is always exciting. So I, I love it. I think uh, Trace... <coughs> excuse me. I do have a cough. I'm not sick. Oh, God. <laughs> it's but bad hey, That's why you're right over now. there and I'm over yeah, here. I know. It's bad for allergies right now. But <clears throat> I'll try to mute the mic if I start to cough. But no, I love uh, Trace and Rafa. Um, they do a great. Uh, I, I just love the dynamic, and I love where it's going. And this episode was great. You definitely, yeah, it was probably one of my favorite uh, little moments with Anakin and Ahsoka there that we'll talk about. But cause, yeah, that was really touching and made the made the episode. I mean, the episode was great, but that was like the best part for me for that episode. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I, I did, did not expect this. I had no idea Kessel had a whole other unmined part yeah. of the planet. That was beautiful and <clears throat> like, a, like a paradise. It's like a renaissance kind of theme to it. Um, but um, very interesting. I mean, definitely still a, a bad place. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm excited to learn more about it and excited to see where it goes because it's... I'm, I love it. I think this has been a great arc so far. Yeah, and um, you know, of course, I wanted to 
Also, shout out to uh, the Mandalore podcast, which I co- help co-host with Martin Donison on there. We kind of dove into this last night where we really tackled you know Kessel and the Pikes and, and stuff like that. So um, go check that out. You can listen to that up. It's up right now. But also, but you know, with Kessel, it, it did give me a chance to um, to kind of do more research on it because I, like you, when I saw this episode. I didn't realize that was Kessel when they, or, or I, they said it was Kessel, but at first I, th- I thought, wow, they, things went really bad on this planet from now until yeah, solo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <clears throat> well, like, I found myself, it's funny because I, th- I was thinking exactly what Ahsoka said when they got to the mining part. And I was like, okay, there's Kessel. And then she yes. said like, the exact same thing. Like, that's the Kessel I've heard about. Like, that's yeah, exactly right. right. That's what we were all thinking. And I didn't realize uh, until uh, I just w- I was thinking about it. I was thinking, you know, I I remember seeing. I thought I remember seeing Kessel, and sure enough, I did some digging. Um, and <clears throat> the F- Spark of Rebellion episode of Star Wars Rebels, the very first episode. Well, it was part two. Mm-hmm. Uh, they go to Kessel to free those free the Wookies, and that's Ooh. where. That's where Kanan is when he reveals mm. himself as as a Jedi. And it's you the, know, when, I, can't, when, I can't remember, but it's when Kalos like is like, part. "Focus your power on right. your fire on the Jedi." You know, that's mm-hmm. they're that, they're on Kessel there. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So it's been uh, several years, huh? It's been several years since I've seen that. So yes, I it's been all about that. It's been a while, but that that I remember. Um, I remember seeing it there, and and it's funny because um, Matt Martin, I saw a tweet to him regarding why in Rebels did they did you do you not see the Maelstrom that you use you have to use to enter the only way in the right. Kessel right because in Rebels because I went back and actually watched it the scene where they are approaching you just see. You just see Kessel, and then you see the ship approaching Kessel, mm-hmm. and he cleverly, Matt Martin cleverly, as he always does, responds and says, "Well, from the angle that it's in Rebels, it's there. You just don't see it. Yeah, it's behind. It's behind <laughs> the ship. It's behind the shot. Yeah, sure. So, um, so it was great to see them doing going in the way Solo did, right? Um, <coughs> the, Ma- the Maelstrom and uh, and approaching in the, on that way. But, but right, yeah, we haven't seen this lush." Mm-hmm. part of Kessel yeah. and the living part of Kessel. And um, so that was interesting to see. And, of course, then, you know, the Pikes are have been around the Clone Wars and Rebels for a long time. Um, they've always been known as one of the four or five big crime syndicates in the galaxy, mm-hmm. along with Black Sun, along with the Huts. Of course, now Crimson Dawn. Mm-hmm. So... You, you know, you have you have the Pikes that pretty much have been controlling uh, spice and the spice um, selling and and, and uh, smuggling of it for for this whole time. And you you, you get a lot of uh, up close and personal look at them in Solo as well because that's who's running the spice mine when they go and steal the coaxium. So mm-hmm. um, it was really good to see familiar things. You know. I love when they, you know, as everybody does, I think, you know, we, we like new characters and we like new stories, but to get familiar, you know, things that we, we know about Kessel and Pikes mm-hmm. and it's really cool to see that kind of stuff and the connection that they've made. So, uh, I did like this episode. I, I, I mean, the reason why I liked it the most, to be honest though, was this scene with Anakin, mm-hmm. um, because you didn't have to put that scene in there. Um, it didn't really add to the story, right? It just added that Anakin knew she was out there and, and she was okay. Now we, we, we did talk about this on the other podcast, but what do you, what, what do you, where do you feel like time wise, how long has it been since you think that she has left the order? <clears throat> I don't think it's been, I think depression has uh, been too long. Um, cause she's still, it seems like she's still kind of rough living on her own. I don't know. She's like driving a rickety old speeder and the 
crashes and it's kind of a piece of junk. And so I think she's probably months, maybe. And it can't be too long because you're talking about you're talking about a short gap to yeah. Revenge of the Sith. So <clears throat> I would think you know, at least a month, maybe, maybe mm-hmm. two, three months. But mm-hmm. yeah, she um yeah she was like she was still kind of figuring things out and still <clears throat> had some feelings about. Uh, just about everything that's happened like it's still fresh to her I got, at least that's the impression that i got it's funny it's funny you you say about she's got this rickety old bike because it actually just popped in my head I, i'm guessing they don't i'm guessing the jedi don't really pay or pay well uh they don't pay uh, what, would they, what would they pay Do they, they don't pay anybody i i guess not i guess you're you live in a, a world just, of uh yeah, just dedication and get expense I, account I don't know. Because, you know, I was thinking, like, I guess she didn't save any money or she doesn't, like, <laughs> have a retirement fund with the Jedi. Yeah. I, don't, I don't. Well, she lost know, her pension and she just left. If you walk when out. When she left, she know. forfeited it all? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I guess that's the case because, <laughs> yeah, it shouldn't seem like she has any money and um, she can't even, you know, yeah, she can't even fix her bike, you know. But Well, well, it's, well it's a funny scene, though. Kind of going back a little bit, but the first episode with Trace and uh, and Ahsoka, she, she she keeps commenting on Ahsoka saying like, "Hey, you know your way, you know how to you know build droids or you know how to work on starships, that kind of thing." And <clears throat> I always got the impression that it's like almost everybody in Star Wars knows how to be is a part partially a mechanic. Yeah, like if you know how to fly a ship, you pretty much know everything about ships and how you have an engineer's mind so it just that was a surprising kind of line for me because i felt like well it seems like everybody knows how to do do this stuff you're right yeah you're right yeah is because she says where did you learn how to build stuff she says oh the skywalker academy yeah and then yeah yeah because then you're right it's like you're thinking she's like well i'm not good enough to go to academy i'm like you just built this whole ship by yourself yeah why would you even need to go to academy (laughs) you know like and learn this yeah like every character, like Anakin, as a kid, like he could build droids. You know, he built pod racers. It's just, yeah. I just everybody would come into knows ships and knows droids. You know, I don't know. It's true. That's true. That's uh, it's uh, yeah. It, you would think, yeah, you would think anybody can could uh, make their way anywhere if uh, as long as they know oh, how yeah. to do that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. So yeah. Um. So they they you know Ahsoka and the and the girls get into some uh, get some trouble with the Pikes and um, they get captured and as as it goes we'll see how this goes uh, how this ends up in the next couple episodes. But the scene with um, well we'll get back to the scene with Anakin because I think that's kind of going to be part of our main topic uh, um, that little connection they made there. Um, but overall, I mean, I, I still get, um, I still get blown away by the the uh, cinematography and the actual design yes. of this these episodes. I mean, it's you know, Coruscant is so uh, easy to me to make look good. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the vastness of it and the just the sheer scope of it is is breathtaking. Mm-hmm. You know when. When you've got the size of the city and the the people that the, the ships flying around, it's easy to make that stuff look good. But you know, you get. I mean, I'm just amazed by some of these close up shots that they have of it now. It's and then, like I said, I went back and watched the end of season five, and even though that still looked good, there's a clear difference of the quality. Oh yeah, you know no, there was there were all the all the shots, all the scenes <clears throat> when they're flying in this episode, the cockpit and stuff and. Especially when they're um, flying out of Coruscant, you get the sunlight coming through the, the cockpit, yeah. and how it hits their face, you know, moves as they're flying around. It's like like a real ship, like a, you'd see it kind of in the movies. <clears throat> it looks fantastic, and mm-hmm. yeah, the detail, the depth of feel. I feel like it all just looks so much crisp, more crisp and sharp, yeah. or something. Just a lot more life to it. It feels like. Agreed. Yeah, agreed. <coughs> um. Okay, so we'll get we'll get into a little bit more here in a second with that. Um, the I did see I have seen on Twitter and, and social a little bit that the some people are already receiving the Skywalker Saga box set that's uh, getting released tomorrow. 
Um, if you pre-ordered that, some of you actually got it. I saw uh, today. That's a that's a big price tag for that one. Um, mm. Have you seen that one? The box set that they've put out there. Oh, oh yeah, I mean, how I many? Half a dozen or a dozen or two dozen discs. I mean, how many? Yeah, like twenty-seven many discs. discs. Twenty-seven discs. Yeah. Jeez, oh Pete. Yeah. I I, <clears throat> I can't imagine. It's on there that I haven't seen. I didn't. I haven't heard that. Is there like all new stuff in there? I don't know, but um, I haven't really looked exactly what's on it. I don't know if I'll. I'm, I'm not going to jump at getting it right away, right. but maybe eventually. But um, yeah, that that comes out March 31st. But you can pre-order that uh, right now. But but guess what? Rise of Skywalker is already on digital. Yeah. So, uh, and I have a feeling they're going to probably move it up to Disney Plus sh- uh, quickly. Yeah, I would say uh, mid April, maybe. Yeah. In a couple think. more weeks, I couple think it'll probably weeks. get on. Yeah. So, Star Wars comics now. Uh, we both are kind of finding our way back into those and getting caught up with those. Um, Number four dropped uh, last week, and we're both kind of into that. Now, this kind of um, – to get everybody kind of re-caught up again on this this story arc, uh, this is directly after The Empire Strikes Back, uh, where this story has picked up. Uh, Lando, you know, uh, has this, Lando has helped Luke and Leia and Chewbacca and the droids escape Cloud City once – Han was frozen, and at this point in this issue, uh, Lando has convinced them to go back to Cloud City, and he's has his own agendas like he normally does. But his uh, but his story to Luke is that he knows where his <clears throat> lightsaber is, <clears throat> the one that fell into the garbage chutes once his hand got cut off by by Vader. So. Um, what was surprising about this issue and, and at the end of last issue, uh, which I thought was interesting. And again, hopefully if you read it, you read it. If not, this is kind of spoilery, <laughs> but, uh, at the end of the last issue, uh, what was surprising was that Leia was frozen in carbonite. Yeah. So yeah. she's experienced <laughs> the same thing Han has. I mean, I kind of was a little surprised by that. Yes, and I can't actually. I can't remember if it was was it this issue where she said it, or was it the previous issue? I guess it had been previous issue before where she said she wanted to see how they work. Is that right? Yes, yes. To see how to see how to turn them off. So this is how she yes. learns, I guess. That's right. So it's a little like just a switch, and you, yeah, they come just, out. Well, Luke, <laughs> it's not, well, Luke figures it out, and this. I think it's in this episode where Luke turns all of them off in this this issue. In this issue, yeah. He knows how to do it already. Yeah, (laughs) and it was funny that they they pointed out, I think it was Landa that pointed out that because it hasn't been that long, she won't experience hibernation sickness. Yeah. Right? You know, because at this point, or at this timeline, by the time they get to Han, it's been a year. So he would have been in carbonite for a year. So therefore, he experiences that blindness. But yeah. the people that are have been just kind of frozen just in the last few hours, um, there's no there's no side effects or anything like that. So, yeah. um, but you know, Luke unfortunately doesn't get his saber, and we kind of know that. Yeah. But uh, some Ugnot does, and yeah. It's I I it's interesting. Do you, I I mean somehow we still have to find out how this thing gets to Maz, right? Yeah, I mean that's kind of the impression that I'm getting is that he's not getting it back, right? <clears throat> I mean, no, he's already kind of made up his mind that he's gonna, I think, build another one. So, and I'm I'm a little confused how the Ugnot why why the Ugnot has it because I thought we were pretty clear on like someone grabbed it and someone else has it i i see i i'm that's the thing is that so the big reveal (coughs) at the end of i think that was the end of issue one wasn't it um i think so where 
he has a vision of the saber falling, and yes, a, a hooded figure catches the saber, and it says, and he, they say, it, it is your destiny or something like that, right? Did, yeah, did, he, did he have that vision, or did we just see it as... I, see, I I think he saw the vision of it, but I don't. I think he thought it was real. Like we, I don't know if it was real. Now that's I'm kind of getting the impression well, with this issue that maybe it was just a vision he had. Yeah, this issue made it very clear that he's having. He had some sort of vision <clears throat> about his saber, and um, he saw some of his past and some of his future. And there was that one, yeah, image of that person that hooded that. He's in Jedi robes, looks like. <clears throat> says, uh, I think he says, like, Skywalker, follow your destiny or something like that. But I'm trying to look at the first issue here really quick to see if, if it's clear, if it's a um, vision or not. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, it could just be a vision, and that's kind of a bummer. It's just an Ugnaught that has it and yeah. sells it. Because there, there is a panel that shows the hooded figure again in this issue for, <coughs> and it's got Vader <coughs> And it says you cannot hide. He says oh, you cannot hide forever. You know you got yeah. Obi Wan. This is the weapon of a Jedi Knight. And then you have this hooded figure. It says Skywalker, follow your destiny. And it's it looks like a hooded Jedi. It's mm-hmm. he has gloves on. Um, you know it's just they don't reveal. And then you then they, yeah, like you said, there's a future shot of the Emperor. When he's yelling, take your weapon, you know, and then you got yeah. Yoda, your weapon, you, you will not need them. He already had experienced that. And then you've got Leia, back, you know, trapped in the carbonite, which is what he sees. So it's like, you know, I don't know. It's it's uh, something's connected, but the saber, obviously, it's a very historic saber. I mean, Anakin had it for years. But, I mean, I don't, I, I, I mean, I'm under the impression that he'll he won't get this back. And Mm -hmm. he'll go a long time. Now, the question is, you know, what's just funny is that this might be why George, well, I don't think George had this plan. (coughs) You know, George Mm -hmm. never put that cut scene of him constructing the green saber back into Return of the Jedi, right? Because now we haven't really established when he got that green saber, when he constructed that green saber. So he could Mm -hmm. shortly do that here soon yep. and then he has the green one this whole time this whole year because mm-hmm. we're kind of led to believe with that with that that deleted scene is that he built that thing just before he walks into Jabba's that palace it almost feels like it yeah right yeah yeah he's in and, the same outfit yeah which has been on about Tatties, a year so he would have went a year without having a lightsaber um, yeah so I'm looking at it was issue two <clears throat> at the end of that one the, char- the creature or the character the person caught it <clears throat> and yeah it's it's like he's getting a vision luke is almost or like almost like someone's calling out to him right that's kind of how i read it but he says mm-hmm. it says the same thing it says skywalker follow your destiny, follow your destiny. So. yeah so i'm not sure if we'll get to figure out who that is i don't you know um <coughs> but he clearly they leave um they leave Bestman without it. And he's talking about following his destiny and he's going somewhere. And, you know, we don't know where he's going, but he's telling he's he knows where he's supposed to be going. Well, he says he sees things recently, visions of a woman, maybe a Jedi. So he's assuming that this robed person is a, is a woman. Hmm. Um, it's like the Force is sending me to her. So I guess we will find out eventually who that is, but they're not going to have her his saber. Maybe that's what starts his construction of a new saber, his current saber, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, I, I, so I think that's going to be the – I think that's what's going to happen. I think he's going to get this green saber a lot sooner than we had originally thought he would. Yeah, that's fine. I, that'd be great because, yeah, even though that deleted scene, you know, is out there, it's not canon. Well, it's not. So they can do whatever they want. That's right. It is just a deleted scene. I mean, I honestly, I always didn't really, it was cool, cool scene, but <clears throat> I can, I'm glad they didn't put it in there because I thought it was kind of, it was a little, had a little cheesy kind of moment to it. It was just funny where uh, Luke, after he 
constructed it. He's like looking at it, going like, "Hmm, like this is good. I like this." And just it was a weird, just funny little scene. And I was like, yeah. that, "That would have felt weird, I think, in the movie." Yeah, because I, I definitely like it that if you know if you don't if you don't obviously <coughs> read anything between Empire <coughs> and Jedi. You know, when he walks into Jabba's palace and doesn't have a saber, you kind of understand why he lost his saber in the previous movie and he doesn't have one. And so when you see R2, you know, lit open and it pops up, you're like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't you don't know that it's coming and um, that's pretty good. That was yeah, a pretty, I mean, on George's part back, in, back yeah. when it came out, that was a good reveal. Yeah, plus we need... A better scene to where he's because now we know. I feel like every time someone builds a lightsaber, they <clears throat> are always like meditating and they use the force to put the pieces together. Yes. Um, whereas, yeah, in the deleted scene, he's just got little tools and he's just, which is still cool, but um, obviously it's not as cinematic as hopefully yes. they'll, they'll reinterpret that in the comic where he's making a much more epic, heroic moment. That's right. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think they will, <clears throat> he'll go to the proper way of building. Yeah. A saber, that because that would be fun if he has to go re find a crystal. Yeah, and, well, absolutely. And that'd be really cool. um, yeah, that'd be really neat. Okay, uh, so this episode. Uh, I'm sorry, I was going to say the, the, before we get into the Anakin Ahsoka discussion, the next episode of uh, the Clone Wars, which is going to be Episode Seven. This Friday, dropping on April 3rd, is called Dangerous Debt. And, of course, the description is taken prisoner by the Pikes, Ahsoka and the Martez sisters attempt to escape. So we saw that at the end where they got captured. So time for them to try to get out. I think we're going to see uh, I think we're gonna see Ahsoka going full Jedi here um, in this yeah, next episode. Time. Yeah. Um, now, do you think... I don't think she doesn't have her sabers, right? She, no, I haven't seen it. Um, I think she has them, though. She doesn't get rid of them right until the novel, until after all this, after Mandalore. I mean, she obviously has it for Mandalore, but <clears throat> I yeah, but those are has blue on. ones. So I'm assuming she gets <coughs> give her new ones when she takes over the <clears throat> takes the mission because she ended. So she had green ones That's when true. she left the order at least when she was on the run she had she had green ones Mm -hmm. Uh, they so we'll we'll transition into this this discussion but yeah so i went back and watched the last four episodes of season five and basically the whole thing centers around the there was a there's a bombing of the jedi temple right and they suspect that it's a Jedi that could have done it. So there's a huge investigation. Ahsoka gets um, framed and blamed for the attack. Therefore, the Jedi kind of fall, you know, kind of betraying her in a sense and um, blaming her or even, you know, um, you know, more siding with the evidence than listening to her. But, it's it's so good, you know. I, I was glued to it. I I didn't want to stop watching it. Uh, the storyline was really good. The connection was really good. It was is very, you know, mysterious. I mean, I mean, yeah, it's, well, it was a good reveal at the end. Yes, a huge reveal. Um, you know, watching it over again, and you you kind of get the subtle hints a little bit that it right. could be who it ends up being, but. Um, the, but the big thing here is the relationship with Anakin Mm -hmm. because Anakin was the only one in that arc that actually did try to find the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody else, even including Yoda and Mace, they, they just looked at the evidence and said, you know, you're guilty and there was nothing, you know, you, you lost your way. You basically fell to the dark side and. Uh, you, you you did this, and you're going to pay for it. And you know, at that point, there's one point where she she's on the run and finds her way in the lower depths of Coruscant again. But she loses one of her sabers 
in the right. in the run, and then she she has one, and I'm assuming that gets taken away from her <clears throat> when she gets arrested. You know, so that's true. I don't yeah. know if she has her sabers when she leaves. Uh, they're not on her. You know, she's not carrying them when she walks away from the temple. So mm-hmm. I don't know if she has sabers now uh, going into this season. We know that she gets blue ones because that's what's in the trailers um, when she's fighting Maul, and then we know that they eventually turn white. Well, mm-hmm. she well that story is in the book how she gets white yeah. sabers, right? Um, so she doesn't hang on to these blue ones forever. But anyway, yeah. Um, I don't know. Well, let's well let's talk first about this scene that's in this <coughs> past episode with Anna. What, what was your uh, what was your initial thoughts about uh have seen anakin in this episode uh so i mean yeah just kind of you now walking through it seeing anakin was great i was unsure how often we would see him again <clears throat> you know based off the summaries of later episodes i know he'll come back but i was totally surprised to see him here uh i thought it was just gonna be a, kind of a funny little scene of them almost getting caught and then escaping but it turned out to be amazing i was getting so as soon like as soon as he closed his eyes to to start to sense who's on the ship i was just freaking out like this is super <laughs> cool so i was just like yes get like give me this awesome moment because it was very much like an like a complete opposite m- mirror opposite in a way from what happened in rebels where darth vader senses ahsoka you know, I think he calls her the apprentice. It's like the apprentice she lives, or something like that. And like, yes, just the, like they will always have this connection, and it's so incredible. And like you were saying with the arc that you just watched again, you know, it's just a testimony of the entire series of how it builds upon their relationship. <clears throat> it's, I don't mean, it's kind of like, it's it's like basically like Obi Wan and Anakin relationship. It's a brother sister relationship slash father daughter relationship i mean it's kind of like a mixture of both <clears throat> he's definitely you know her master and caretaker but like this this scene here just perfectly summarizes that relationship and how he just i mean he was really hurt when she left but he totally gets it and he just wants her to yeah like he could have stopped it he could have caught her you know if he wanted to to try to convince her to come back but <clears throat> he let her he let her go because he you know loves her that much so loved it loved this scene i was just yeah so amazed Did, how so i guess the question <laughs> comes down to that i was kind of thinking about going into recording here was how much <coughs> because we 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 know we know from the movies, if you just watch one, two, and three, you know from the movies what has what contributed to Anakin's fall to the dark side. You know, he was completely manipulated by Palpatine. He was in in, in all in all facets where, you know, forced to to kind of he basically sensed his mother that death really drove him apart. I mean, just the separation from his mother in episode one, you know, was was definitely uh, a contribution to that and, you know, attachment, right? And then you have the fear, which is the fear of losing her, and then, of course, the anger of losing her. Um, and then you got, you know, Padme, and then you've got the child that you never saw at the time. And, you know, you have a lot of all you – can, you can clearly lay out the reasons why he fell. Um but what you don't get when you watch the movies is you don't get this relationship that he has with, with Ahsoka. I mean, how right. much do you think that relationship actually contributed to him falling? Um, I actually don't know if I, geez, I actually don't know how much it contributes to the to the decision. Obviously, I think it was Padme all the way that that tipped him over the edge like that just the um the the drive to want to save her all everything we saw in original the Sith, to me that is that is what sends anakin down the path uh or at least that's what tips him over the edge he was mm-hmm. like you said he was constantly manipulated i mean just like what we're what we saw with kylo and rise of, rise of kylo ren it was like just 
he was just constantly manipulated by Palpatine. So Anakin right. really, you know, he was set up to fail. But <clears throat> no, Ahsoka, I mean, the loss of Ahsoka, I don't know. I, I actually don't know if that's, if it, if it contributed in any way, it helped Anakin be convinced by Palpatine that the Jedi are are corrupt to the point of that they are the ones that are evil. <clears throat> I mean, I can see it. I can see it just being just a piece of the justification of like, no, you're right. The Jedi are evil. I mean, I I don't think it was. I don't think this really pushes him at all towards the dark dark side. At least not again. Not when it happened. I think it was just a piece of him that was kind of manipulated towards the end. <clears throat> but because yeah, Soka left. He was he was mad about mad about it, upset. But I think he came to terms with it. I think this scene here shows that he's come to terms with it, and he's he's okay with what Ahsoka's doing. Yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I, yeah, I agree with that. I think the um, you know when you when you go back, which I did a couple weeks ago, I, I went back and even watched the. Clone Wars movie that kicked off the you know the whole series and the introduction of Ahsoka and you can clearly tell in that episode too it's 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 laid out that Anakin didn't ask for a, a Padawan right he was given a Padawan by Yoda and there was a you know a meaning behind that and you know over the <coughs> years which we're only talking three years basically that the Clone Wars last that he has developed this relationship and. You know, it's cut short, obviously, because she left. So, but I think there's a sense of, I definitely think there's a sense of failure, right, with, with, with Anakin. I think that. It's true, yeah. Um, kind of in the sense later on, you know, Obi-Wan kind of senses that whole thing also, you know, that he failed Anakin. So, I, I, I you know, this, but this is a different kind of failure because I feel like Jedi, masters you know their sense of failure is that they're possibly their apprentice uh falls to the dark side right you know um Mm -hmm. it's rare because you know we know that because of the lost 20 it's rare that anybody leaves the order right right or is exiled from the order Mm -hmm. and the only way yeah you kind of lose an apprentice if they give in to hatred or they give in to anger and they choose a different path. So it's been a long time. I think Dooku wasn't, I guess Dooku, well, not a long time, I guess 10 years. Dooku was the last one to actually leave the order. Mm-hmm. Um, so she has now left the order under his uh, apprenticeship. And it's just, you know, I think I think that's got a way on him, especially now that it's going into the end of the war, right? I mean, it's one thing if she leaves and he's got another year of fighting to do, but you know, here shortly he's gonna go after a captured Chancellor mm-hmm. and she's gonna go fight Maul on Mandalore. And you know, he doesn't have time to really fully process I, I, at least I, I would think he doesn't really have the time to really fully process her returning and contributing. It's been, like you said, it's been some time, maybe a few months, several months that he, <coughs> she has left. And, um, <coughs> you know, we, and we didn't get a chance. We haven't gotten a chance anyway. I mean, for, for, correct me if I'm wrong, but this might be the, uh, let's see. I mean, he was only, Anakin was only in, a handful of episodes in the season six, right? The Lost Missions. I mean, he only showed up in like maybe. Th- he was in that first arc with the with the chip. Uh, wasn't he in the? F- he was in the first episode of the Yoda arc, I believe. Right. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Before he, he before Yoda. Yoda went on his mission. Yeah. Yeah. And then he was on that that single episode where they track down. Uh, they're trying to track down Sifo-Dyas. And they fight Dooku again. Um, right. Okay. So he was, but then there was two episodes with Mace that he wasn't in. I don't think, you know. So he was scattered, but you know there wasn't that 
story at all. There was no story in there regarding Ahsoka leaving, right? Mm-hmm. So there's no, I guess, dealing with it or processing it, you know? So yeah. um, it, it does make you wonder a little bit how much that relationship uh, did contribute to his his fall because I think it, I think all of this is what is, is, is kind of what we're getting told is, you know, all of these things has happened, has, have, have, have happened to Anakin mm-hmm. and there definitely is like anybody, right? Everybody has a breaking point and I don't know, that breaking point was Mace Windu was about to kill the only guy that can save my wife. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, yeah, it's like instinct, just like it's like it's just a complete defensive reaction in a way. I mean, this season of Clone Wars has, and uh, and I talked about when I was on the Mandalor show with you guys that this this because you had the the, moment with him in Trench, Anakin Trench, where he just he went a little dark side on that Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in that moment where this season has done a great job, I think, of showing us making us feel like we are very close to Revenge of the Sith because Anakin feels closer to the edge, like more impatient, yeah. more just like, I just tired of this war, just want to get it done. Where <clears throat> it was, um, <clears throat> yeah, like Bad Batch art showed us that. It, it was it was really good. And then there was a moment with um, Obi-Wan where he kind of teased Anakin about Padme. <clears throat> like, did Padme, what does it say? Like, did Padme say hello or something like that? I can't remember. Right? But the look that Anakin gives him, he turns around and looks at him. He, like, he looks like a little mad. Like, he just, <laughs> it's, he's yeah. just irritated. Like, he's just really, <clears throat> oh, yeah, he's definitely getting there. Like, all these all these events, all of this entire war, everything's building and accumulating. And he's <clears throat> definitely in a prime position to be tipped over the edge. So, it's, Clone Wars has done a great job at uh, filling that gap for mm-hmm. his journey. It's very important. Mm-hmm. So the flip side of that, though, real quick is, <coughs> and, you know, obviously this won't <coughs> ever change, but the flip side is had had Ahsoka not left, had had she decided to stay or had she decided or had the council really uh, backed her and proven her innocence uh, to keep her there. You know how how much of that could have contributed to him not turning. You know, mm-hmm. if she was there, you know, and you can honestly think even to uh, Obi Wan with Obi Wan leaving Anakin's side in the, in Revenge of the Sith and going after Grievous. It's like, mm-hmm. what if they would have stayed together and? could he have talked him through, mm-hmm. you know, what was really happening? And if Ahsoka was there, um, which never again would have been, yeah. right? No, I think if Ahsoka was there, it would be, a, it would be a completely different ending, different story. Uh, yeah, Cause they didn't have, he had, didn't have anybody near him to be that voice of reason or to just talk. Yeah. Just, like that, just talk to him. Just mm-hmm. you know, a, he didn't have because I mean he kind of he I don't know it, it is said that Anakin unfortunately didn't feel like he could trust Obi Wan with with the secret, or even right. as things were getting more complicated with Palpatine and Revenge of the Sith, you know he he confided in Palpatine. Mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. he 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 started to feel like Obi Wan was also withholding information that he couldn't be trusted and Anakin couldn't trust him. <clears throat> so uh, maybe there would, would have been a way Palpatine would have done the same thing with Ahsoka and Anakin's relationship. Maybe he would have found a way to turn him against her as well. So, <clears throat> excuse me, since he is that master manipulator, but I mean, I, you, I like to have hope that, yeah, if Ahsoka was around, it would be a pretty different cause, situation. Cause what was she, where would she be other than I feel like by Anakin's side, right? You know, she wouldn't have been on the council like Obi Wan, distant from Anakin. She would have been there with him, to she, and she would see what's happening to him. I think if yeah, make yeah. myself sad talking about it. But I know, and and and, yeah. and it makes it even more regardless <coughs> of what happens, or the way we can speculate what happens. But you know, 
what has happened is, yes, yeah, she left the order and then has helped the Jedi uh, take down Maul in a sense, uh, which we'll see at the end of the season. But mm-hmm. in the end, what's pretty powerful is if you think about it, I mean, these two end up fighting each other in Rebels. And yeah, I mean that. I remember, I remember watching that, thinking, "Wow, look!" I mean, Vader now, you know, mm-hmm. and, and that was a clear. Which, you know, we've talked about this on the show. It, it, it's debatable about whether or not, because because I don't think so. And what I'm getting at is that we've been we've been told a few times, and you know, and and we've heard it through the story group a little bit that, and I remember, I think we had talked again, we talked about this when this came out, but when that episode aired where Vader is fighting Ahsoka, I remember, I think if you remember too, I think Filoni had mentioned how when, you know, when his eye gets revealed, you know, she cracks his skull or not his skull, but the mask and Mm -hmm. his eyes revealed and he's flat out just trying to kill Ahsoka that, you know, there's, there's no there's there isn't any Anakin in him in the sense that he is Darth Vader and anything that is has to do with Anakin he wants to destroy. Mm-hmm. I mean I kind of vaguely hear remember him saying that. Yeah. And if that's true, you know, I don't know because it maybe maybe this is just held at a different standard, but we've seen now through the comics and with the VR game, that he's very much still trying to hang on to his past, where he's mm-hmm. trying to still find Padme and bring Padme back. So, in that sense, he's very much Anakin still, right? Yeah, um, it, it does. It seems you're right that that explanation about Anakin and Vader <clears throat> and Anakin's past. That's I, I remember that as well. But it seems like Padme <clears throat> has always been that one part of Anakin. Uh, it's his, it's his love. So it's it's that one part of Anakin that he cannot live without. I mean, mm-hmm. He came to terms with Ahsoka, <clears throat> as we saw in this episode. He's accepting of of her being gone. Um, but I, I think Padme is the one thing he can't live without, and. His relationship with Obi Wan is also something that really hurts him as well, more so than Ahsoka. But yeah, <clears throat> but he can obviously live without it because he tries to kill him and he's fine. But yeah, he's always trying to get Padme back, and that's just another reason to justify how Luke is the one thing to bring him back. Yeah, because right. it's. It ties back to Padme. You know, that's it represents his mm-hmm. one love that he can't live without. So that's and that just I mean, again, all these stories, it just makes it so much more compelling and, and changes your point of view of how you watch him again. We watch all of this and watch Rebels, the fight with him and Ahsoka, then we play the VR game to and read Vader's castle. It's like all these things about Vader and how he's just trying to yeah. I mean, he in a way, like, you're right. He's trying to fight to. I don't know if he's like trying to fight to get Anakin back, or he's just trying to fight to get the one thing that he feels is missing, mm-hmm. and he can't until Luke comes. Then he does it. Again, and he tries again. So very tragic story. Very yeah. very compelling story. And, and um, yeah, I mean, maybe, and I think there's still more opportunities to tell that even beyond Clone Wars. That relationship with Padme and, and Anakin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely want to keep monitoring that because I think the end of the season will we'll still get a little more Anakin and Obi or Anakin and Ahsoka. I think the you know, I think we've seen it in the trailer, that scene where you know she he walks Ahsoka into the Mm-hmm. Hangar or the barracks there, and there's Rex and yeah. his five hundred first squad, and they've got their helmets painted and ah- Ahsoka's yeah um, markings. And I mm-hmm. mean, that's just and it does come down to what Filoni said, which this technically this whole series is 
is Ahsoka and Captain Rex's stories. You know, it's their story, not necessarily Anakin's because that's in the movies. So it's not necessarily mm-hmm. Obi Wan's because it's in the movies, and not necessarily Padme's because she's in the movies. But Rex and Ahsoka, the ones you don't see in the films, mm-hmm. this is their journey, and their journey yeah. technically hasn't ended yet. Um, we saw them come back in Rebels. There's rumors that Ahsoka is showing up in Mandalorian, and there's mm-hmm. even rumors out there that Rex may even show up in Mandalorian. I mean, I'm reading rumors now that people are running with being true that Ahsoka may get her own live action show. Yes, because of all this, I think this. this is definitely for real. Yeah, but <clears throat> um, yeah, one thing that would be really cool throughout the rest of the season uh, of Clone Wars is. That scene, yeah, where, where Ahsoka basically comes back into the to the to the war. Like, I mean, do you think they reinstate her into the order? Oh wow, wow! I mean, do you think yeah, that's, that's like the uh... only that's like how they have to do it? I don't. I mean, I was kind of thinking like that's one thing Anakin feels is missing. And then if if this uh, if this kind of fixes that in a way. But then it would be really crazy as if, yeah, we see the Siege of Mandalore, we're, we're overlapping into, um, overlapping into uh, Revenge of the Sith a little bit. But then maybe Palpatine tells Anakin that Ahsoka's dead as well. So maybe that is another thing to push him over the edge. I don't know. Because that, that's kind of another question, like lasting questions at the end. It's like, okay... <clears throat> Obviously, we didn't have Ahsoka during Revenge of the Sith, but would have would Anakin have gone after her or tried to find her or ask how she is after all this Order sixty six is happening? That's true. Yeah. Well, I mean, actually, that's true. Um, we'll find out maybe like when does exactly the Siege of the Mandalore happen? Because <clears throat> yeah, if it happens. Because technically, when by the time Obi Wan goes and tracks down Grievous and kills Grievous, basically that's according to the Jedi, that's basically signaling that the war is pretty much going to end now. Mm-hmm. Their their leader's dead. They the droids won't know what to really do now. So, but at that point, while Anakin is technically still on Coruscant, hanging out with the Chancellor. I mean, sh- the Siege of Mandalore at that point should be over, right? Or if it's, if it's still going, which I can't imagine it's still going because it's by this time it's just it's just they're centered around getting Grievous now. They're not because mm-hmm. he would have left to go help and destroy That's Maul, a very right? Very good point. I uh, I never even thought of that. Yeah, very good point. So that should have gotten wrapped up shortly at the beginning of Episode Three. Mm-hmm. And you're right. Wouldn't he have? checked in on her to make sure she was okay or even alive. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously it was successful, I guess. It, uh, it yeah, do, maybe. It does make yeah. you think, it does make you think, or at least starting to make me think a little bit about timeline now, that that orders that we may not see Order 66 until maybe the very end of the ep- of the last episode. Mm-hmm. And at that point, maybe the Siege of Mandalore has already been concluded, um, at least the, the the fight with Maul, mm-hmm. because it can't last that long again. Because during Episode Three, you know they're not, no one's worried about what's happening on Mandalore. <laughs> right? Yeah, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I bet we'll get a scene then that is during the events of Revenge of the Sith where it's like a conclusion just of Ahsoka and Anakin there. You know, that just, would be it's awesome. Just, it's just, you know, in between a yeah. couple scenes there, that Vigil of Seth, where we, we'll watch it again and be like, oh, he just went and saw Anakin, and now he's yes. back. Or, somebody, or he went to he went to go see uh, Ahsoka, and now he's back. I don't know. That'd be really cool. Oh, yeah, you can almost to the point where you can drop that scene in the movie, <clears throat> and yeah. it happens <laughs> in, that, in that order. That would be... That would be pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. I would be totally up for that. Mm-hmm. Um, but but again, but thinking through, still, it's like 
Okay, well, as Anakin is feeling frustrated by the council, and why would he not seek out... Like, if Ahsoka's kind of back in his life, would he not consult Ahsoka about what's happening with him and the, the, the council? Uh, he's just been put on the council. You know, would he not try to say, tell us, hey, Ahsoka, I'm having these visions of Padme. Can you help me find a way to save yeah. her? So, right. They, so at that I point, mean, she's yeah, she's gone or not part of the order, or he's she's presumed dead, I guess. To him, I mean, I, yeah, she can kind of like after Siege of Mandalore can be like telling I can I'm gonna go off on my own now. You won't hear from me anymore. Yeah, I mean, I can't. I, I don't know. I actually don't know why she would do that again. I feel like this is gonna kind of wrap up and make everything good again. I feel yeah. like I don't know. But I gotta, um, I I gotta go back and watch Rebels again though because I, it might have been in there and because I vaguely remember <coughs> possibly that that she might have mentioned to Ezra or something about leaving the order about um, being mm-hmm. away from the order. I mean, it's possible that I, I, for some reason I have a vague remembrance of her saying something like that. So maybe, yeah. No, I, I had the sense yeah. that she didn't go back. Yeah. No, more and more I'm starting to realize, like, I don't know how this is going to end. Like, I keep thinking, like, Season You're Mandalore, right. Order 66, it leads up to the movie, you know, but, I mean, into the Ahsoka novel, but I have no idea what's going to happen. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't either. Uh, you know, because we, again, at Celebration, we did hear that, we did hear some things about Order 66 and when that happened, and they had plans mm-hmm. to show that, and and I think if I remember, I thought that Filoni said that in his original concepts that Ahsoka was on was it show on Felucia, and they tracked her down, like the, the clones tracked her down yeah. during Order sixty six, um, and but she was able to get away, obviously. So um, I don't know. It's um, it's interesting. Like you said, it's definitely interesting once you start talking it out, talking timelines. Um, I, I I don't know how the thing is going to end, and I don't know what that last, you know, episode 12 is going to contain at all. Yeah. Um, oh, but that's exciting, though. I'm glad that yeah. kind of... Yeah, totally. <clears throat> up in the air about totally. it. Totally. Uh, all right. That's, uh, that's kind of what we're done talking about in this episode uh good some good stuff there with anakin and osoko i think we i think we'll have a lot of stuff to talk about there as the season comes to an end and mm-hmm. we definitely will get more stories i think you know vader is still alive and strong out there in the comic world right now and um i do think you know i still think that we'll get some um we're going to get a lot more stories between episodes three and episodes four, mm-hmm. you know, there's still a big gap there and there's still, um, a lot of stories to tell now, especially with Ahsoka, um, before she finds her ways, uh, to the rebels, to spec, the specter group. And, mm-hmm. um, yeah. And, you know, we're fine. Again, we're still finding out stories with Vader, <coughs> like the VR series and what he's trying to do and what he's done with this castle. And, and, uh, this is a big dynamic there that that has yeah. been created by George and and Dave. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's by, Ahsoka by far has just become a huge popular character, and um, <clears throat> I mean, she's definitely, I guess, because it's hard for me to put myself in those shoes, but she's def. I feel like she's crossed into the mainstream, pretty mm-hmm. pretty much. I think she's pretty much mainstream now. Of, yes. People, I mean, Mandalorian too is gonna. Everybody's. She will definitely be mainstream now. Like, yeah, the great. average casual Star Wars fan will know about her. Yes, which You're is right. incredible and yeah. incredible. And what's I mean, what needs to be sung even louder now is the fact that George Lucas created her. Mm-hmm. I mean, people are gonna discover her for the first time in Mandalorian, and say like. I don't know, and not know that, no, this is a George Lucas character, and That's you guys right. have missed out on the yes. past 10 years, 11 years. Years and years of footage, yeah. Years and years of content with her. Um, 
I'm just, and I'm just glad it worked out that way because obviously, yes, yes, there's been characters that haven't made it, you know, and um, mm-hmm. characters that people kind of <laughs> been upset about, and this is um, this is one that's definitely lasted. And there was a time when people didn't like Ahsoka, yeah, you know, early mm-hmm. on in the series, but um, they kept with it. And they kept giving her depth and and grew her, and I think yeah, I think she's become a a great great character in the Star Wars galaxy. So. Mm-hmm. Can't wait to see if she, if she becomes live action. I mean, that's going to just be. I mean, Saul Guerrero is one thing, but Ahsoka, uh-huh. that is something else. So, yeah. All right. Go watch this last episode uh, of season seven, Deal No Deal, and then go ahead and get ready this Friday for episode seven, Dangerous Debt. Uh, with more Ahsoka and the Martez sisters. And then we'll be back next week. Uh, Go listen to the Mandalore podcast where we kind of dissect and deep dive into the episodes, the Clone Wars episodes specifically. But come back here at the Inside the Force, uh, get Casey's take, and uh, we'll dive a little bit more deeper on some different topics overall of the Star Wars saga. After uh, after the fo- the next episode, episode 8, which is called Together Again, um, Casey has signed a contract to come on and, uh, <laughs> uh, with us on the Mandalore podcast and talk about this whole arc that we're going to have with Ahsoka here. So um, he'll be on there a couple of weeks. And then we're going to enter in the last four episodes of the series. So, man, it's <laughs> we're, only ha- we're already halfway through, man. It's uh, yeah. crazy. So thanks, everybody, for listening and watching and uh again we can't stress enough um that our thoughts and prayers are with everybody out there that are dealing with this situation and uh you know i I feel i'm definitely counting my stars I, i feel very fortunate i think casey does too our situation and you know that we're able still to uh do stuff like this and mm-hmm and and enjoy star wars and enjoy trying to share this with you and um mm-hmm. yeah i mean uh, reading the news too and kind of keeping on that with disney um first of all they're they're doing great along with all their studios and releasing their content earlier but like i just read today bob Iger <clears throat> is foregoing all of his salary yeah all of it for this and uh, the new ceo is doing 50 percent of his yes. salary, like that's that, that's the perfect example of how people should be behaving right now. So it's fantastic. Do you? I mean, I hate to, because some people might not appreciate this, but do you know what his salary was? Um, well, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it changed. If his step I don't, stepping down, I don't think it did. Um, well, he didn't step 30 down. Million, he thirty million. He years. was. He he didn't step down. He basically just gave most of his CEO duties to the new CEO, and he was yeah. Uh, they well, split the him off. Yeah, yeah. They split him off and created a, a role that was the executive chair. <clears throat> so he was still <clears throat> much involved in, in charge of Disney. He was just in charge of the creative side. But um, but I think his salary last year was sixty five million. Sixty million. Gosh, I was halfway there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so. That's that is incredible. Um, I mean, yeah, it, some people might say that that's too much, or you know, in, in the end, anyway. But look, the Walt Disney Company is a massive empire, and no pun intended. But <laughs> uh, yeah, and what he's done with that company, he deserves every bit of that. And to be able, to be able to do that, it just tells you how incredible, thoughtful I think he is. Mm-hmm. Now, hopefully, and we don't know what. I mean, I haven't read what they're going to do with his salary. Hopefully right. they do some good with his salary. And, you know, at least, I mean, my, my initial thought when I was reading that article that I thought it, I was going to, I thought I was going to read that they were going to redistribute it to like all the other employees. You know, yeah. To make keep, sure. To, to keep paying the hourly um, employees. Um, Cause I think, yeah, Disney world is April 19th. I think might be the, like the What's last, that? is it? I think like April nineteenth is when, or April eighteenth is Disney's like saying like the the hourly employees are <clears throat> like yes. you know it's as far as long as they can take it. But so hopefully 
but while you're doing this, we'll help take care of yeah those people that are struggling the most. Right. Yeah. In the end, uh, we just I just want to we just, I just want to get back to Galaxy's Edge, right? Get yeah. Back to Batu. <laughs> so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Get get that uh, hotel, man. Too. That's... Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah, that's right. That's coming this. Uh, well, it's coming next well, year, I think. Yeah. yeah. I've halted construction on it. I don't know. Yeah, I think they're still building. I think they are able to <laughs> still build. I got my trip in June. Hopefully, I can still make that. Yeah. But we'll maybe. see. <clears throat> and then they st- there's still no news about celebration. I haven't heard or <clears throat> seen anything. So I guess no, everything's a go still. Yeah, I'm. I'm st- I'll still. I'm finishing the um, application for our podcast, so it's. Um, I mean, that's August, so it's. I think it'll still be a weird time in our country, but hopefully by then at least they'll they'll allow. I don't know. I mean, I honestly, yeah, I'm I'm getting less and less optimistic about it, but yeah, um, I'm not sure how they're gonna handle that. I'm not yeah. sure. But we'll keep you posted, uh, and we'll we'll monitor as we go. So thanks, everybody. Um, again, hope everybody stays safe this week. Have a great week. Go uh, hang out with each other, and you know, not too close, but you know, hang out with each other and interact still, and stay connected, and watch some Star Wars, and and, and enjoy um, all the things that you may not have time to to do normally, right? So uh, yep. it's a good opportunity to do that as you, as we kind of stay isolated. And, and get through this this stuff <coughs> in our lives. So, thanks everybody. Take care. Uh, thanks, Case. Yeah. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. For Case Cooley. See you guys. Stay safe and healthy. I'm David Cottingham. May the force be with you. <laughs>